August 13th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Colossians chapter 1 from the New Testament. From Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, and Timothy our brother, to the saints, the faithful brothers and sisters in Christ, at Colossae, grace and peace to you from God our Father. We always give thanks to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you, since we heard about your faith in Christ Jesus and the love that you have for all the saints. Your faith and love have arisen from the hope laid up for you in heaven, which you have heard about in the message of truth, the gospel that has come to you. Just as in the entire world this gospel is bearing fruit and growing, so it has also been bearing fruit and growing among you from the first day you heard it and understood the grace of God in truth. You learned the gospel from Epaphras, our dear fellow slave, a faithful minister of Christ on our behalf, who also told us of your love in the Spirit. For this reason we also, from the day we heard about you, have not ceased praying for you and asking God to fill you with the knowledge of his will, in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so that you may live worthily of the Lord and please him in all respects, bearing fruit in every good deed growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, for the display of all patience and steadfastness, joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the saints' inheritance in the light. He delivered us from the power of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation, for all things in heaven and on earth were created by him, all things, whether visible or invisible, whether thrones or dominions, whether principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and all things are held together in him. He is the head of the body, the church, as well as the beginning, the firstborn from among the dead, so that he himself may become first in all things. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in the Son, and through him to reconcile all things to himself by making peace through the blood of his cross, through him, whether things on earth or things in heaven. And you were at one time strangers and enemies in your minds as expressed through your evil deeds. But now he has reconciled you by his physical body through death to present you holy, without blemish and blameless before him, if indeed you remain in the faith, established and firm without shifting from the hope of the gospel that you heard. This gospel has also been preached in all creation under heaven, and I, Paul, have become its servant. Now I rejoice in my sufferings for you, and I fill up in my physical body, for the sake of his body, the church, what is lacking in the sufferings of Christ. I became a servant of the church according to the stewardship from God given to me for you in order to complete the word of God, that is, the mystery that has been kept hidden from ages and generations, but has now been revealed to his saints. God wanted to make known to them the glorious riches of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. We proclaim him by instructing and teaching all people with all wisdom so that we may present every person mature in Christ. Toward this goal I also labor, struggling according to his power that powerfully works in me. God, I'm really excited to record Colossians, mostly because this book is just all about you. Now, I realize that the Bible is all about you, but this book is saturated in words and descriptions and theology that is all about you. One of the commentaries that I was reading about Colossians said that it covers so many different facets of who you are. It said it is with Christ celebrated as the object of the believer's faith, the image of the invisible God, the creator of all dominions, the head of the church, the firstborn from the dead, the unifier and reconciler of all things, the savior through his sufferings on the cross, the treasury of all wisdom and knowledge, 
the triumphant victor over sin and Satan, the exalted Lord of life and glory, and the true pattern for the life of Christian faith. Uh, it doesn't get much better than that. God, as we start to read Colossians and um, we learn about a, a church that Paul didn't, he didn't start this church, one of his disciples did. Um, but as an apostle, he is writing to them to help them in their walk with you. And I think this, that Colossians is, is an amazing story about your sovereignty. We have other books that are a lot more clear about the specific walk we take with you and what does that relationship look like. But this speaks volumes about you and who you are. And if we're ever going to even begin to barely understand what sovereignty is, this is the book that's going to start to show us that, that you are all these different aspects of the world in uh, chapter one that we just recorded starts off exactly there that you were everything are everything will be everything you created everything and everything is created for you and I think that that sums up pretty much the whole Bible right there that we are created for you we are created for your glory we are created to reflect your sovereignty, to reflect your grace, to reflect your mercy, to reflect your love, to reflect your forgiveness. We were created in your image. And that image is not necessarily an exact replication of you, but all of the different facets that we're about to read about in Colossians. That's the image that we were created in. We are all of those multiple facets that reflect your glory, God. I just even get goosebumps thinking about that and how exciting it gets that our lives could be spent not on the things of this world, but on, on reflecting who you are and the ginormity of who you are and the endlessness of who you are. I was reading a post on Facebook and it says God's grace is immeasurable. His mercy is inexhaustible and his peace is inexpressible. And you are sovereign and we just don't understand what sovereign means. We don't understand how big it is. We don't understand the depth of it, the width of it. We, we just don't get it. Um, our minds cannot understand that, but you don't call us to understand. You call us to trust you. You call us to have faith. You call us to give up the worldly things and follow you. Some pretty simple requests, if we really think about it. Trust you, have faith in you, and give up our worldly things to do what you've asked us to do. And in a book like Colossians, you don't have to teach us how big you are, how amazing you are, the, the depth to all of your incredible ways of taking care of us. You actually don't need to show us any of those. All you need to say is I'm your creator and you need to do this, but you don't. You swoop in with your arms surrounded around us with grace and you swoop in and hold us tight when, when we're struggling so and you give us mercy. You bring peace into our hearts on those nights where we just can't sleep and you just take everything away and allow us to breathe. God, you didn't need to show us all of these amazing different parts of you, facets of you, ways that you are. And I get really excited because every day I get to learn more about who you really are. But yet you did. Our generous, kind Savior, who is loving beyond anything I can imagine allows us to get to know him more and more. And then you give us amazing books like Colossians where we get to know so much about your character, so much about this amazing God that we serve. God, thank you for being a God that is so big that I will never understand even a smidgen of all of who you are. I thank you that I serve a God that I can't understand. I thank you that I don't serve someone like me <laughs> who is common and I can put in a box and I can make sense of everything and um, who from an intellectual standpoint I'm an equal to equal with from an emotional standpoint I'm an equal with thank you for being 
so gigantic, so enormous, so sovereign over everything. Thank you for ruling over everything that you've created, including this world. And thank you for ruling over my life, for caring so much about me and loving me so much that you want to intimately be involved with my day in and day out existence, helping me walk the path that is best for me. That is a love that I will never understand, God, but I am thankful to you for it. In your son's name I pray, amen.